Yo guys, what's up? So today I'm going to discuss why I have problems with my film Project Spider-Man. First off, I just want to make a statement. What I had in mind for a Spider-Man film didn't exactly turn out the way I had hoped it to. So let's just start off talking about my initial idea. My initial idea for Spider-Man was to make a darker version, a rated R version, an adult version of Spider-Man. That's more grounded in reality, you know, like kind of like The Dark Knight. And I wanted to shoot for like an Oscar-worthy kind of film, where the, the performances, the believability of the characters, the drama, that was my main goal from the beginning. The problem wasn't really with the tone for me. The problem was with the fact that there are too many flashbacks going on, there's too many things that didn't really connect well, too many things that didn't make sense or kind of confusing, and there's too many characters, there are too many villains, um, too many little plot points going on that just really didn't need to be in the movie. For example, the, the character Mysterio didn't really need to be in there at all. Um, I just kind of threw him in there, to be honest. I, I just wanted to put my own spin on each of the villains, as many as I could. And I wanted to have the Sinister Six as part of that. You know, kind of like an Easter egg kind of thing. But, the problem is, it just, you gotta pay more attention to the story. Because that's what's more important. You can't just throw things in there that don't make sense. The main story would be that Peter is, he's locked up in Norman's garage and he's trying to escape. And then we have all these flashbacks that kind of jump back and forth between him being captured and back in his days as Spider-Man. And the, the problem is the time intervals, they just don't make much sense. They're not clearly defined. Though if I could redo Project Spider-Man with a similar story, I would have it the same way where Peter's captured by Norman. And Norman is the only villain in the story. And the story could focus on the main plot point, which would be Peter sues Oscorp Industries. He sues Norman Osborn for Dr. Connor's death. And I think if I focus more on that, it could have been a much better story. We didn't go where we should have, where we could have gone. We could have developed the characters and the plot, like I said, way beyond than what it was. Instead of getting distracted by all the side characters and the villains and the Easter eggs. An alternate way I would do it is I would just have Chameleon be the villain. And it's, it's a struggle between Spider-Man and Captain Stacy. You can only make one movie once, so... I guess I thought that if I'm only going to make one Spider-Man movie, I want to put as many Easter eggs and all that good stuff as possible. And that just didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. I think the main problem that happens when we're getting into writing the story about a superhero is that we get so caught up in the superhero genre, but more specifically, got caught up in the fact that it's a Spider-Man movie. It's about Spider-Man, this character that I wanted to stay true to and not disappoint audiences with. So I was trying to throw in as many facts from the comics as possible, all these little things that people might I say hey okay yeah I remember that that's from the comics the way I would do it again is I would completely forget that it's a Spider-Man movie as a matter of fact I would just call the character something else I would still call him Peter Parker when I'm writing the script I wouldn't acknowledge it as a Spider-Man movie I would just acknowledge it as like a crime drama or a thriller and I would write it in that style exactly and I would pretend that it's not Spider-Man that I'm writing about it's just a normal teenager that goes out and tries to stop crime, tries to make New York a better place. And in that, I would be able to write it without that pressure, or with that thought in the back of my head that says, oh, this is a Spider-Man movie, you gotta remember to have this and that. And I wouldn't have that if I, if I wasn't writing it in such a biased way. I just think the character of Peter Parker could have been developed better. There's just certain things I wanted to have. I wanted to show that he was a teenager in high school, the awkwardness of high school, the drama of trying to find your identity, find yourself, discover who you are, find a girlfriend because a lot of teenage guys in high school are trying to get a girlfriend and they're struggling with that the, um, the nervousness of trying to ask her out on a date just little things like that I could have thrown in there but I just didn't have time because I, I had to throw all these other things in there oh, another thing I would like to have improved on is the death of Uncle Ben the, um, I could have shown more of the effects on Peter and Aunt May financially, emotionally, more psychological things, the way he would change the way he goes about his daily life in high school, his grades might be falling, things like that. Also with Gwen's death especially, could have had a lot more depth to the effects on Peter Parker after her death. I wish I would have elaborated on more, but didn't have time because of everything else. Talk about the duration of this one. It's two hours and 45 minutes. I had to put on two different DVDs for it to be a full length film and several, several parts on YouTube, 21 I believe. Yeah, that's the longest film we've ever made. And uh, I've learned from that, for sure. 
you know, because now his attention span is only so long, and then even mine, when I was watching it, I was like, yeah, this is, I, even I'm getting bored. And some scenes, like, all the bathroom scenes just didn't really need to be in there. Like the long extended scene where he's cleaning his gun wound and cleaning the bathtub after all the blood was on it to make sure Aunt May doesn't see it. That could have been way shorter. One thing a few people don't realize is how hard filmmaking really is. Especially with this film, Project Spider-Man. It took a, about a year and a half, I would say. It took me a year to write the script. I remember I wrote it junior year. I brought it a lot in my pre cal class, spare time. And just developing all the story and trying to add all those little things I said, the Easter eggs, say a million times. I took this uh, journal, this composition book from my pre cal class I never ended up using. And I, in pre cal I would just take little notes and write down Peter Parker's life. So this is the story in order. When I wrote the script, however, I would write it out of order because that was just my style back then. Uh, for some reason I thought it would be more interesting. Movies, are, movies are, would be boring if they're told in order. I found that not to be nearly as true now, but back then I thought it, you have to have a flashback, it has to be out of order for it to be interesting, but not necessarily every time, and, and the way I did it was way too confusing. The reasons for that would be because of inexperience with that kind of stuff. I'm not ready for that yet. I need to do more linear storylines, which I'm doing currently. So I wrote that journal, then I wrote the script, revising again and again, and then getting actors to be in the movie. That was the hardest thing too. And then the filming process, trying to get all my friends to keep going with me till the end, it's kind of tricky. I mean, it's always been tricky like that. I understand it's a long process. It really is. It takes a lot of time and effort, especially when you're filming in the summer, which everyone hates I do too. But, you know, when you start a movie, you got to finish it. And that's that pressure is always there because you never want to let your audience down. And I never want to let my audience down. So, I mean, for example, we're filming, uh, we got access to this high school, this old high school, uh, because my friend's mom is uh, the assistant principal there. So we got to go over there and shoot, but we could only shoot for one day and we had an extensive amount of scenes to shoot in such a little amount of time. And one of my friends actually had to go to work while we were filming this scene. It was the interrogation scene between Captain Stacy and Chameleon. And he was like, we gotta, you know, we gotta hurry up and film this dialogue fast. And there was a big old fan in the back. I was draining the audio and all these problems, there's little things that just pile up. And time is the biggest thing when you're filming. There's just you're always pressured with time, and I think that was the biggest problem Project Spider-Man is that we didn't get to develop the acting and the characters enough because we were so constrained by time and pressure. That we were just rushing to film the next scene, rushing to film the next dialogue. That we didn't actually stop to think about, well, will this character really say it like this? We didn't look at options. We didn't do multiple takes that we, we could have done. And that's what we're trying to do more now. We're trying to take our time with it. Because we want you to believe what you're seeing on screen. I like the comment saying that... A bad film is just as hard to make as a good film. And I say overall, my rating for Project Spider-Man from a scale of 0 to 10. I would say 6. Because we did work incredibly hard on this project. It took us two years to complete. One for the script, one for filming in a summer. It's a story. It was a little bit different. It was Peter suing Norman Osborn of Oscorp Industries. It was kind of it was an original concept that hasn't yet been explored. And I did achieve the darkness and the tone I wanted to achieve with this film. Uh, the themes I want I got wanted to get across to the crime aspects. I got that. But the problem is I, I can't give it any higher than that because it was radically out of order, confusing, too long. Just scenes dragged on way too much sometimes. And then there were characters that didn't need to be in there. And if they weren't in there, it would have been a better story, a better film, because you would have focused more on the actual story. And the actual story was only there for like the first part when he was suing Norman in the courtroom. And then we just jumped to something else. You don't really give the audience just time to actually start to get to know the characters and care about them. You know, especially Gwen, like she was only in like a few little snippets of stuff, hardly any dialogue at all. So when she dies, you don't really feel that much for her. I mean, you feel for Peter, but, you know, I just it could have been developed more on those aspects, I believe. And I wish it was. Let me know if you agree with this review or if you have any other advice, constructive criticism you want to give me on Project Spider-Man, because I can always use it. That's how I get better. I can't improve unless you help me improve. So please comment below and keep me updated, guys. I'll keep you updated. Thanks.